Hey everybody, what's up? You didn't hear from me yesterday because I was finishing up this week's edition of MMT Trader. Uh, for those of you who would like to get a copy of that, just go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com and sign up for a 30-day free trial and you will get it along with access to all of the back issues. So let's talk about what is going on. First of all, haven't spoken about the Japanese yen in a while, as you know, and if you look back over the videos that I have made over many months, <clears throat> I have said, and I have been pretty much the lone voice in this, that the Japanese yen was going higher. Everyone in the world and all these geniuses here who have their little video YouTube channels saying that the Japanese yen was going down because Japan is printing money. They're printing money. They're in debt. They got so much debt. I have explained so many times how Japan has no debt. They are not printing money. And the actions of the Bank of Japan uh, with the ongoing asset purchases and the negative interest rates, those are unbelievably bullish for the yen. And I was right. And all along, I said that uh, I pointed out to subscribers to my MMT trader every week, there was a massive, massive speculative short position on the yen. We used to get the numbers every week from the uh, CFTC's Commitment of Traders report. Gigantic short position on the yen. I said, that's going to be unwound. That whole thing is going to be liquidated at a loss. And lo and behold, as of last Tuesday, which is the most recent data, that speculative short position has been whittled down to virtually nothing. Uh, and um, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, in addition to that, the dealers uh, are now net short for the first time. So you've basically had the positions flipped around where um, the specs have, have covered all their shorts at a loss. And the dealers now, where I've been long, like myself, I guess they're reading my stuff, listening to me, uh, they are now short. I am not short the end. However, I, I do foresee a correction based on these portfolio shifts now. You've taken out a lot of buying pressure with the fact that the speculators have unwound their short positions. So... I could see the yen uh, undergoing a correction here, but the fundamentals, the macro, the, the policy factors are still in place. You still have the Bank of Japan buying assets. You still have negative interest rates. You still have Japan running uh, positive uh, uh, trade balance. You still have the government running a kind of a balanced budget fiscal policy. So that's all bullish for the yen. So... Um, over time, the yen's just going to keep going up until those uh, policies get reversed. And, and I just do not see that happening anytime soon. So that's number one. Number two, we got an interesting, uh, I guess, news out today having to do with U.S. Steel. Now, U.S. Steel is getting sold pretty hard today. Uh, down around, I guess, 5%, maybe 6 maybe 6 7% actually. Uh, came out with uh, earnings and guidance. You know, it beat Wall Street estimates, but that was not enough for the analysts because some of the analysts, here's actually what they said. Now, these people take themselves to be, you know, serious people, okay? They probably have MBAs. I'm sure they have MBAs. Maybe some of them even have PhDs. I don't know. They probably went to fine schools, so the analysts had comments along these lines. They said, yeah, U.S. Steel beat uh, estimates, but that's only because of the tariffs. If they didn't have the tariffs, they would have to cut their guidance. Well, okay, but the tariffs are the reality now. The tariffs are the reality. I don't see any rationality in analyzing a company based on what might have been. Any rational analyst should analyze the company based on the reality, 
okay reality. Live in reality. It would be like me saying, if I didn't have my right arm, I'd be a lefty. Well, guess what? I have my right arm, okay? So I'm not a lefty. That is number one. And then you had analysts saying things like this. The tariffs are not sustainable. Oh, really? Based on what? According to who? According to your opinion, Mr. Analyst? Um, that, to me, strikes me not just as a, a, an, un, um, uh, uh, you know, an unsustainable comment. I mean, the comment is unsustainable. It strikes me as opinion, as dogma, as ideology, as in somebody who personally disagrees with tariffs and is writing into his or her opinion that the tariffs are unsustainable. That, to me, is um, a, an analyst who should be fired, okay? That is not somebody who's acting on uh, known information. And so, for me, if I look at what's happening with U.S. Steel today based on these comments coming from analysts, which are so deep in personal ideology and personal opinion. I mean, you could just you could just feel it how they are so personally against the tariffs. Okay, and they're weaving that into their analysis, saying things like, "Well, if the tariffs weren't there, they'd have to cut their guidance, or the tariffs are unsustainable." Eh. I'm buying U.S. Steel today. All right. Uh, what else? What else do we want to talk about? Um, a lot of people now, or more people, I should say, are coming around to the inflation outlook, as I have been talking about now for a while, based on the correct understanding of why this is happening. All right. A lot of people are talking about inflation, and they're talking about it just kind of. Uh, you know, without really understanding the, uh, the driving forces behind these things. And I would even wager to say, to guess, if you were to give them, or if I were to give them my reasons, my rationale for the inflation, such as Fed balance sheet unwinding, right, such as higher interest rates, they would say, no, 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 that causes the opposite. The reason for inflation is da-da-da-da-da, whatever they think it is in their head. But the, the actual reason, and reasons, I should say, and I've been all over this, fiscal expansion to a degree that we are going to hit a record amount of federal government net spending this year. Um, interest rates, which is price setting higher, Balance sheet unwinding by the Fed, which is filling up the swimming pool, right? Putting back those high-yielding assets that the Fed had siphoned off for itself. That was income that the Fed siphoned off. How come nobody ever asked, well, how did the Fed's annual income go from $25 billion to $100 billion? That was income that should have went into the economy. The Fed siphoned it off for itself as a result of Asset purchases, and everybody was talking about, oh, that's going to be inflationary. It's going to be hyperinflationary. You don't get hyperinflation when somebody's taking away your income, fools. Come on. So, yeah, that's, uh, oh, one more thing I want to talk about. Uh, so today Trump fired uh, Tillerson. Well, two more things I guess I want to talk about. Trump fired Rex Tillerson, Secretary of State. And in his place, he put in Mike Pompeo, who was uh, the CIA director. Pompeo is a noted Russia hawk. He is, uh, I, I guess you would cat categorize him or characterize him more as a war hawk as opposed to Tillerson. The guy's a West Point uh, graduate, graduated first in his class. So he's military-minded, war mentality, Russia hawk, all right? Uh, that's number one. So he, Trump has this thing about going from bad hirees to worse ones. He fires them, he puts in worse. That's my opinion. Next, Gary Cohn was out last week, and I told you, everyone who sold the stock market based on Gary Cohn's resignation was retarded. I said that. 
Now, Trump is considering Larry Kudlow, of all people, Larry Kudlow, CNBC contributor. He had a show. They canceled it. It had terrible ratings. Larry Kudlow, who got everything wrong in the financial crash, like Schiff. He talked about um, the dollar was going to collapse. He said there was going to be hyperinflation because of the Fed printing money, money printing. Um, he talked about interest rates were going to go through the roof because foreigners wouldn't lend us dollars, which we create without limit, okay? Got everything wrong. So you're going to go from Gary Cohn, who was bad, Goldman Sachs, neoliberal, right, to Larry Kudlow, if that happens? Come on, Trump, what is with you? Bad Hirees going to worse people after that. He's got some pension for this. I don't know what it, what he's doing, really. All right, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.